Greetings, sim captains and crew. Today we're going to be working on the FMC programming for the descent and approach. I decided we should do an interesting approach. We're going into Princess Juliana, which is uh, the site of the famous Maho Beach, where the internet is full of videos of people getting blown away by jet blast, a uh, experience I hope to have some time in my life. We're also going to go through a very well-known acronym for uh, descent and approach preparation called airbag and I'm gonna pause and we'll put that up on the screen so you can see all of the elements for a moment so the first item of airbag is ATIS and we're going to get that information in a moment. The second item, the I, is for installing the approach. We're going to use the ATIS information to install an approach into the FMC. Taking a peek here at the moment, the legs page, you can see in 25 nautical miles, we're going to be out of uh, we're going to be out of our map. So what we want to do is get our approach in here pretty quickly. The R in airbag is for radios. We're going to be tuning our radios to uh, pick up the ATIS. We might be tuning the navigation radios for an ILS instrument landing, although that is not the approach we're going to do today. Um, our B in airbag is for bugs, brakes, and briefing. We want to go up to here to the mode control panel and we'll be setting course bugs, especially if we're using the ILS. It won't function unless we have the final approach course. We're going to set our heading bug, so we're on the runway heading. Uh, the brakes, always good to set the brakes. So we'll consider the runway condition and briefing. Uh, in the sim, you get to talk to yourself, but in reality, this is a complex piece of machinery and it is built for two people to share the workload. Uh, crew resource management is a big deal, so if you ever feel overwhelmed, don't feel too bad. You're doing the work of two people at once at a couple hundred miles an hour. The uh, egg in bag of airbag is for the approach checklist, and we'll check that out over here on the Avatab iPad little duty. And the G at the end is for the go around procedure because things don't always go as you plan, and we need to make sure we are prepared for that. So uh, we're going to skip the ATIS for a moment. We're going to go right to installing the approach. So looking at your FMC, you have sort of these menu keys that take you to the pages here above the keypad with uh, alphanumeric. And at about the center in the second row, you can see DEP ARR for departure, arrival. We've already departed. Uh, we need to set up an arrival. Once we get to the arrival page, can see our origin. This was uh, in Haiti and we've already left so we're now looking to set our arrival. TNCM is the airport identifier, the ICAO code for Princess Juliana. So on the right hand soft key beside it, click. We've got two columns here on the arrivals page. On the left hand side is the list of stars or standard arrivals. This airport has one runway and uh, due to the winds and terrain you pretty much only get to come in one way so it's going to sort of simplify our choices today. So we're going to select this star, Yuluba 1. Uh, keep an eye on the approaches on the right there. If we had multiple stars here, the runway and approach list could have changed. It won't with this airport because that star brings you to all the approaches because they're all for the same runway. Uh, you notice in the top corner on page one of two, just watch that approach list. You can see you can just generically pick. Uh, there is a runway 28, but this isn't really a published approach. So going back to page one, they're all runway 10. So we have selected Yuluba 1. You see the SEL for select. We need to select the approach we want. 
and I'm going to use RNAV 10. It's basically our GPS um, landing approach. I believe this stands for Glide Slope. I've always turned it on. And uh, at this point, you can see they're both selected, and we've got a yellow on the execute. Um, these are not actually active right now. So if I go over to legs, you can see they're waiting. We're in modify. They're not really active. So let's go back where we were. Normally, I'm right here when I click execute. And now you can see they're active. Now, we must have been talking when we overran our last waypoint, and it wants us to reset the mode control panel altitude. So let's check our legs page. We have a discontinuity here. Uh, it would have said discontinuity if I had not overrun our waypoint. But I'm going to clear that message, clear the insufficient fuel. Oh, it's got so many things to tell me. Select Yuluba. Click here, and it moves it up. You see we're in Modify, Execute, to put it in. All right, now I want to check something here. Our distance to Yuluba is 371 nautical miles. Um, you can see our next altitude is going to be above 2,600, the A for above. We don't want to descend right now, even though that's our next waypoint, because 369 nautical miles is quite a distance. But at this point we have installed an approach. Reference materials. If you are not using Navigraph, uh, let me just boldly say you should be. It's uh, somewhere I think it's maybe eight or nine euros, ten US dollars roughly a month. It's updated monthly. The charts are Jeppesen charts. There's nothing to complain about with these. These are fantastic resources. And to really do uh, heavy metal trips outside of the United States, it's basically going to be impossible for you to piece together your departures and arrivals in any logical, safe, or real world way without using this. So let's take a peek here. This is the approach chart. So we should look at the top. You can see our RNAV to runway 10. That is the one I selected in the FMC. I have pulled this up on Avatab so we can refer to it. I'm going to go check something here in a moment, but let's first look at our star, our arrival. There is only one to this airport. It there, Yuluba One arrival, and you notice it doesn't matter where you're coming from, from the north, the south, from the west, and you see all the eastbounds are brought in, either over or under. They all come back to Yuluba to connect here, and then here is our uh, regular old airport chart and there's not a whole lot to look at. We've got run one runway at 7,546 feet right here at, uh, before the threshold to runway 10 is our famous Maho Beach with uh, I've always assumed this is a hotel and I believe there's a, a bar here from the things I've seen on airliners.net Pretty much at the moment, the most important piece of information to us is going to be this runway length as we consider our brake setting in a moment. Uh, the shorter the runway, the more aggressively we might want those auto brakes to kick in. We also have some other important information up here, the uh, ATIS frequency. So now would be a good time for ATIS. Our frequency is 127.65 go to your center lower pedestal here. On this panel the comm radio is up at the top. You can see our VHF uh, is already set to 127.65. The final digit there is not particularly important. Uh, 
don't let that bother you. Below that we have a nav radio and we are not going to be doing an instrument landing and Princess Juliana does not have an ILS system so there's really nothing to tune this to. Uh, even if we are doing an RNAV, if the airport has an ILS on that runway, I tend to tune it up. Why not? Redundancy, more information. Ooh, look at that, transponder was off. All right. So we have checked our radios. We have installed an approach. And you notice um, the radio is set for ATIS. We're not picking up any ATIS at the moment because we have a ways to go. Using the program page button here, P-R-O-G, we have a ton of information. This was our last waypoint, the one I overran. And you can see the actual time of arrival at that waypoint, our fuel at that waypoint. The next waypoint on our plan is Yuluba. Distance to go to Yuluba, 339 nautical miles, our ETA estimated fuel at that point. The following waypoint after that, you can see that be about two minutes farther. Then here's our actual destination. There's the ICAL for Princess Juliana, TNCM. It is 387 miles, so this is beyond the range or radio to receive the ATIS report. So we're going to use the FMC for another neat feature Zebo has put in here. Using the menu key, click it, and you get this. Uh, you perhaps ignored this when you started up, or maybe you were more curious than myself, but I was flying the Zebo for months before I ever bothered playing with the A cars. I actually don't think it was on the earlier versions. That's probably why I was ignoring it when it first appeared. A cars is usually a company-based system for the pilots to use these radios and the onboard uh, interface of this computer to send and receive data back to their company. So we're gonna pull up the A cars here and you can see Zebo has given us one function in it. We're not going to be talking to a company other than uh, in theory to request ATIS. I'm loving this feature because we can get the information now even out of radio range. So Tango November Charlie, Mike, put a soft key beside those blanks, there we go, now you can see the send, so we're going to simulate transmitting this, VHF in progress, there's our send time, it's usually averaged about two minutes before we get our uh, ATIS report back. While we're waiting for that ATIS to pop up, uh, we've already installed our approach, We've set our radios, and so it might be useful to think about why we want to know the ATIS as soon as possible. If we were at an airport with multiple runways, uh, the likelihood of uh, a different runway than we anticipated being in use is quite possible. So to avoid a last minute scramble to reprogram the entire approach or to select a new arrival that makes more sense, we're going to check the ATIS for the runway in use. Let's see if our ATIS is here. Ah, hooray it is, like I said, about two minutes. So click the soft key beside ATIS. We've got our report. Fantastic, all right. So on the second line here, um, we've got, uh, this is not really the automated terminal information system that you would here over the radio. I tuned it up. You're going to hear it later. This is more of a uh, BTAR style. But we've got our airport identifier. Next, we have a timestamp. So the 04 reflects the day of the month, which uh, that's not really the day I'm filming this, but I don't think I have my sim set to real time. So it's whatever the sim time is. And here's the timestamp on it. Uh, 100 Zulu. So that's kind of important to note. Let's go check the clock since my 
real world time has no bearing on the sim time. You can see uh, universal coordinated time UTC is reflected on this captain's clock. Uh, it's 15:25 UTC, which is, means the same thing as Zulu. Uh, if you don't see UTC, this top corner button rotates or scrolls through the menu. There's date. Here's local time. It shows this manual, I guess. Uh, but let's go back to our universal coordinated or Zulu time. This is actually a pretty stale ATIS report. I mean, well, 14 and a half hours. That seems uh, a little ridiculous, but it's a sim. We're not going to worry about it. So, airport, timestamp. This is a uh, in 080 at 9 knots. We have a cloud report. There are a few clouds at uh, 1,800 feet. The temperature is 25 Celsius and the dew point is 20 Celsius. If those two were closer together within a degree or so, you'd have more concern about fog potential. Uh, and then next we have our altimeter settings, the uh, Q&H, or the A is the pressure setting we're going to be using here. Right now we're in standard, which is 29.92, but we can grab that altimeter setting of 30.00. And this no sig means no significant changes are expected. And that's good because it's been about 14 or 15 hours. I'm going to actually tune up before I have a chance to forget about it. That pressure setting. You can see under standard in a smaller font, 30.00. That's a standby. That is waiting. So if we know, for example, in our descent, that that's the setting, the arrival airport, we can tune it up. And when we hit our transition altitude, we're going to punch this STD, or standard button. We'll toggle over to what I prepared right there. Let's jump over and get the co-pilot side prepared as well. Sebo has a setting to link these two so you don't have to jump over and be the co-pilot. I don't really tend to use that. All right, so we have done our, uh, we, we dialed up our ATIS on the radio. We're waiting to hear it. We kind of cheated and did the uh, ATIS uplink, which is actually more of a METAR. We've, do we do any other radios? Uh, we're, I'm not really doing any fat sim or calm work, so I'm not particularly concerned about dialing in any radios to uh, talk to any air traffic control, but that would be something you'd want to be tuning up. The bugs, brakes, and briefing. Uh, I tend to go a little heavy on the brakes a simulated aircraft. I'm not paying for brakes or tires, but uh, it does ruin my day if I overrun the runway. So I'm going to go with at least a two. If I feel it's going to be sketchy for any reason, I, I probably go heavier. If we had any fouling, such as water, certainly snow, ice concerns, we might go harder on this. Okay, uh, bugs. Let's see where we'd find our bugs information. So, Princess Juliana coming into runway 10. You can see the actual heading of that runway is 96, 96 degrees. Going over to our arrival plate, we should find on that chart the actual final approach course. Um, I'm trying to think of a time when that final approach course did not match the runway. I don't think I've really seen it. The only kind of bonkers thing I can think about is Kai Tak, where you're coming in on a course to that uh, goofy checkerboard hill and then swinging into the runway, which is a visual procedure at that point. And Kai Tak's gone now. Um, so pretty much assume that the final approach course should match, but we're going to get it from the chart. You can see it's in a much bolder font here. It's also going to be in the 
information up here at the top. It's written out, final approach course. The places we need to put that information in would be the captain's course heading and the co-pilots. If we were using the instrument landing system, it would need that information to be here in course. For our purposes, uh, performing our nav down to a visual, it's a nice reference for us. We can also spin our actual heading bug down to 96. Oh my goodness. Well, I just noticed something very interesting. Uh, here's your crew resource management moment. As I've been puttering around and talking to you, we have gotten ourselves off course. If you remember a moment ago, we hit end of route in the FMC. Now that's not something I've ever had happen before because usually I'm just programming in my approach and not babbling into the OBS microphone. So when we overran it, it would appear the mode control panel while it's still in command, has canceled my VNAV and LNAV. So, if you notice here, if no more command, nothing is actually lit up. So it's actually sort of interesting that we're not really up. Uh, maybe we're just trimmed out very nicely, but it's, nothing is set to hold right now. So I'm going to re-engage the VNAV, our vertical navigation our lateral navigation. I'm going to toggle. Oh, no, nope, don't need to toggle it. Let's see, it's immediately captured. It's only been a few moments I'm talking to you, so this isn't going to be a particular fuel concern. And we are in the simulated world with zero other aircraft and no ATC to comply with. But, uh, that's certainly the sort of thing that a second set of eyeballs in the cockpit would have helped us catch. As well as, you know, I'm sure real world procedures cover these sorts of things. Alright, I'm going to leave that ATIS there. Let's click our legs to go back. Let's see what we've got going on here. Check the program. We have 175 nautical miles to our top of descent, T slash D. Uh, early on in your flight, you'll see that's T slash C, and that's time to top of climb, uh, the estimated time in Zulu, and the distance. Also, fuel quantity at that point. All right, so since we have a little while, we're going to talk briefly about the remaining items. We talked about the bugs, the brakes, and the brief. I'm going to actually sort of be briefing you as to the last two items in airbag, which are the appro approach checklist and the go around. So, top of descent is at 1558, and the current time is 1531. Don't worry, it won't take me 27 minutes to tell you this. Um, Briefing should include all the pertinent airport information to make sure pilot and co-pilot are on the same page, aware of any altitude information, restrictions, other concerns, obstacles, etc. Concerning the actual approach, we need to know who's actually flying the approach and what responsibilities the other pilot will have during that time. Perhaps the most important part of this uh, briefing is going to be the G from airbag and that is our go around procedure. Oh, I am just a piece of work today. I have just accidentally bumped my yoke here which automatically disconnected the autopilot twice in one trip. Not good. Alright, I'll be a little more careful. So, uh, we're coming in off of our star at Gouda, which I may have not put that in. We'll go check that in a moment. You can 
can see all of these approaches are merging at Avaki, and there's a hold here. The actual flight I had in mind to simulate today is a WestJet flight. Now, WestJet is coming in from Canada, and I was cheating because I wanted to do the FMC. I didn't want to spend all afternoon flying down from Canada for you. But, regardless, we need to, uh, oh, sorry, I remember what I was telling you. When I actually tracked on flight radar the WestJet coming in, it probably spent about 10 or 15 minutes out here doing holds, and uh, doubtlessly one of them was at Avaki. Interestingly enough, there was a, another hold to the west of Avaki that I was seeing. If we are a straight in from Avaki, we proceed to Lesser. You see our course there is 95, and then we turn one degree to our final approach course of 96. Now, interestingly enough, our sort of decision point is here at Mapon. This is where we would bail out to our go around if we knew in advance that we don't have runway, visual, or some other issue. Uh, it, it is possible to have a go-around situation, an unsafe landing of some sort, but it gets a little more interesting and exciting the closer we get to the runway because we have these hazards right in front of us. And you can see the altitude markings, uh, 975 feet, 723, 576, uh, 1118. So basically, you've got a sea level runway headed towards about a thousand foot obstacle after it. So let's check what our go around is. All right, missed approach will be a climbing right turn to 4000 direct to waypoint on bed and hold or is directed by air traffic control. So if we knew early at map on, we would turn out to on bed and we're going to see that reflected in the FMC uh, and actually we need to check and make sure that it actually is there and this little cutout in the map is showing your mis mix missed approach fix can't talk today we have some altitude and speed information as well as the hold out at on bed you can see in the descent profile from Avaki down to Lessor, and then from Lessor, we have our standard three degree descent rate. Uh, map on to your decision point, and from there, if you're proceeding, it's going to be visual. And this little area is also telling you your missed approach. Uh, climb to 4,000 right hand turn direct to on bed minding those obstacles alright so we have done our ATIS we've installed, oh sorry, we've tuned our ATIS, we haven't heard it yet but we've pulled that ATIS METAR thing off the FMC we've installed the approach, we've tuned the radios we've got our bugs set, our brakes are set uh, our briefing is done, I have skipped the approach checklist for the moment, we have done our go around there's one thing I want to make sure we did here. Let's go back to our arrival page. Click the arrival for Princess Juliana. I did not select a transition. Let's talk for a moment about how to choose one of those. If you don't select it, right now, we just go straight to Yuluba. Let's go back to arrivals. We're going to select a transition, so we need to figure out what makes the most sense from our arriving course? Dandy, Ilopo, Gouda, Manolo, Sluggo, Trinky, Zapata. Alright, and we're just using the ones on the left. We don't actually need the one on 
there on the right. Oops, sorry. Alright, so this is the star, the arrival chart. And we're just going to see from where we are relative to this what makes the most sense. We are not coming in from the north, so Sluggo, Trinky, Manolo are not sensible. We're not coming in from the uh, southeast side, so Ulopo and Zapata are out. Uh, Dandy is south of our course. Gouda is our most sensible option. So if you noticed, Yuluba is the next waypoint in the FMC right now. When we add the transition of Gouda, it should automatically put in this routing. Gouda, Elora, and then on to Yuluba. So let's try it out. Selecting Gouda. You can see everything's in select mode. It's waiting for us to execute executed it is now active going to the legs page ah we've created an interesting situation here you can see Luba is populating right now and then having just looked at the map Gouda Elora Yuluba now this doesn't make any sense so normally you'd clear discontinuity by selecting the line below the discontinuity and then clicking on the line with the gap and it would pull it up. Now I'll execute this, but it doesn't make sense because to fly to Yuluba, the plane would then need to circle back to Gouda, Elora. It doesn't make any sense. It will be a fairly sharp maneuver. and uh, So we need to clear Yuluba out. I'm just going to click on Gouda. Click to the left of Yuluba, which overwrites it. Execute that. And now it's in. Alright, and you now see we have an altitude of 13,078. That is a fairly random altitude. That is not something mandated on the chart. So that is the FMC's prediction of where we should be to have a descent that is sensible from our top of descent to where we want to be. All right, we're going to talk for a moment about the approach checklist. Our time is 15.37 on the captain's clock, and we're expecting our descent in just under 20 minutes. This won't take us terribly long. If you're big into checklists, the Zebo has it all for you. You can check, check list and procedure from right here at the main menu. So select it. If you haven't already noticed, uh, just kind of like the FMC, we have pages 1 through 3. There's not a next page button. This is one thing Avatab didn't really... I, I think they, they should have left here a next page button. But the way they did it, pull your mouse near the right hand side of the screen. You see that arrow pops up. That's how you're going to get to the next page. So click there, page 2 of 3, 3 of 3. And then you need to, it doesn't wrap around, so you're going to go back this way. All right, uh, these are pre-flight, before start, push back, and just start before taxi. None of that is applicable now. Let's go to page two. Takeoff's happened. We're climbing the cruise right now. Descent. Let's look at the descent list. This is probably going to mimic a lot of the information we did with airbag. ATIS, install approach, radios, bugs, brakes, briefing. Approach checklist is obviously this, and go around Landing altitude, they would like us to verify that, and that is a pressurization item. So, let's go upstairs on the overhead panel, bottom right, this little area here has our pressurization. The flight altitude is set to flight level 350. Our landing altitude is currently set to zero. That's the default. Let's hop on over here and make sure that that makes sense. So Home, Avatab, Airport. It's still on the last chart I referred to. There we go. What we're looking for is the airport elevation. Here we go. Um, this is, should be on the airport chart as well as this is the approach chart we're looking at right now. Uh, I don't remember if it was on the star. So airport elevation is 14 feet 
and the runway elevation is 12 feet. That's pretty negligible. You, you can't have... I'm trying to think of the most extreme I've seen, but uh, certainly 50 feet is not really that unusual. Um, for, so from uh, taxiing from the runway threshold off, you, you could have quite a change in elevation. Either way, for the pressurization setting, this is going to scroll in increments of 50. 12, 14, they're both closer to 0 than they are to 50. So we're going to leave it at 0, which is the default. Okay, back to our checklist on page 2. Sorry, it's a lot of clicking to go back and forth. I would consider that to be sort of a... It's a negative to using the Avatab as your checklist and your charts. So we're on descent. We can click that box. That is done. The system enunciator. Uh, that's our. Uh, see, we've got nothing. This is the warning enunciator here beside the master caution. And uh, if you click it, it should come up if there was anything. And we've got nothing. So that's good news. All right, the approach reference page of VREF. File that away. We're going to do the VREF when we begin our descent. Uh, we're still going to burn some fuel from here. If you look at that program page, it's like right now, it's just our fuel gauge. We're over. Uh, actually, it looks like we're about where they're expecting the top of descent. Uh, but by the time we get to the end, you can see we're going to lose another 2,000 pounds of fuel. So I don't want to set our VREF yet because it's going to be relative to weight. So we're going to hold on that. Radio and uh, minimums as needed. You can tune up the minimums if you feel so inclined. Here's your scroller for it. I'll be honest, I don't really tend to use that. So, I'm going to check it off. Navigation radio set and verify we are not using the nav radio. And we don't have an ILS. So just tick that off. The auto brake, uh, we talked about it. I think I set it to 2. Check. Auto brake 2. Alright, this is page 1 of 1. That is the full descent procedure. Just remind yourself we're going to do a VREF later. Let's go back. Let's look at the approach list. By the time we're flying an approach, we can't crew resource manage. We don't have a co-pilot. So you kind of need to have this in your head. It says, if flaps 15, landing uh, needed. So you're going to get a gear horn anyway, but if you get to flaps 15, by that point, it's time to extend the landing gear. Okay, so at flaps 15, we need gear down. Ground proximity flap. At or above 10,000 feet. Fixed landing lights. Your fixed landing lights are up here. This ship does not have the LED landing lights, so we have four switches for the retractable lights that will extend. And uh, here's the fixed on this side. We also have sort of a whammy bar to get them all at once. It's two stages on the retractables to get them up because uh, there's power and then there's the retract. The fixed is a single toggle up or down. So we'll do that 10,000 feet. Passenger sign, you know, the normal descent things as a passenger. I'm sure you've, you've heard the descent speeches and seen the flight attendants scurrying around to clean up the last minute trash before you get to the ground. At our transition altitude, our altimeter needs set. We're prepped for that. But we do want to double check that this is uh, agreeing with the ATIS when we get in radio range. Uh, I can see now on our map display that our top of descent is just starting to peak in here, marked with the green circle and the T slash D. That's pretty much.
much what we've got there, and then we have procedures for landing. Uh, you're not going to have time to look at this. It's uh, it's just not going to happen. But it's good to know that you're going to need to know your decision altitude when you're going to decide to continue with the landing or to go missed approach. Don't forget to put down that gear, and don't forget to look for the green lights. That was, uh, that was my mistake. Flap lever 15, engine start switches to continuous. Uh, that's a safety thing, particularly in rain, just less chance of an engine failure with those starters firing continuously. Speed brake lever needs to be set to arm. We actually play with that right now. I don't normally do this by hand because I have it on the uh, on my joystick here. There you go. See, we moved one click. And we have a little enunciator here for speed brake armed. Actually, I can leave that on at the moment, although we're likely to use some of the uh, speed brake or spoiler on descent. All right, speed brake armed, page two, flap lever as directed. We're gonna be extending the flaps as our speed lowers. I'll talk about that as we do it. Uh, below 300 feet at missed approach altitude. Be ready to go. Um, nice thing if we had a co-pilot is your co-pilot can be preparing your missed approach information in the MCP as you're handling the landing. Uh, when you're doing this in the sim by yourself, you need to scramble a little more to get yourself out to that missed approach fix, clear the terrain, clean up the uh, flaps and the gear, just everything's a lot more exciting when you're doing it by yourself. Alright, well, it looks like we've got a few moments of peace here. It's about uh, seven minutes until top of descent. So, we're going to pause this video for a moment and I'll pick you back up uh, just before top of descent. Welcome back, Sim Captains. We're just about to top of descent. Uh, even though we haven't exactly hit it yet, you can hear, well, I can hear. You might see the engines have substantially rolled back. And now they're kind of stabilizing a little bit higher. But basically, we're coming out of or ending our cruise. Let's look at the legs page. We need to set an altitude. Uh, the first one in here is. 13,078. You can't actually put in the number 78, so I was kind of laugh it comes up with those numbers. What I'm going to do is put in the following altitude, 2,600 or 2,600 and above. Uh, I'm going to put in 2,600. The FMC will only descend as far as we have programmed here in the mode control panel. So if I set this ahead of time, before we hit top of descent, it will begin the descent all by itself. So we keep running it down. Now we're out over the open ocean. Uh, if, for example, as part of the arrival, we were clearing some terrain, I'm not going to run this down to 2,600 because I don't want any chance that the ship is going to descend prematurely into terrain. Since there is no terrain here, that's not really a concern. All right, so we've set our altitude in the MCP, and we're coming up on top of descent. If you're new to the Zebo, other than the particularities of programming the FMC, some of the sequencing of 
what do you put in and when and which buttons do you click to make it actually activate are uh, good to know. Good way to know what you actually have active is to look right here. If you remember earlier when I had unwittingly overrun the end of the route, uh, we looked at this and there was nothing here. It was still in command. Meaning the autopilot is in control of uh, all of our control services. But now the FMC is holding the speed. LNAV is active. VNAV. Ah, look at that. Looks like we've hit our top of descent. So retard means we are slowing down. Zhoo, there you go. Look at that N1. Fuel flow is just about nothing. Look at that. And that's why we're going to wait on the VREF until a time such as top of descent. From here down, pretty much just uh, in idle, essentially. We're just floating on down. So we're not going to have a huge change in fuel. Uh, one exception might be, for example, if we got put in a hold and we're cruising around at a very low altitude, uh, this is going to gobble up a lot of gas at a low altitude compared to up here where the air is substantially thinner. Alright, so I mentioned VREF earlier and we've got a few moments before anything else is necessary. We did have a message come in, you might have heard the bong, you can see a message is lit up here and it shows up in the bottom and it says drag required. They're asking for the speed brake to be extended, so we're going to extend the speed brake, clear the message. Uh, let's go outside and take a look at that. We're basically just spoiling the airflow over the wing. Alright, and you can see the FMC is handling our descent all by itself. Here's our descent rate, 2,550 feet per minute. We will need to keep an eye out for uh, transition altitude. Checking our distance, we are just under 100 miles, 97 nautical miles to uh, Princess Juliana, and we still are not picking up an ATIS. 127.650. Alright, we are continuing our descent. We're 34 miles, nautical miles from Gouda. Um, let's go here to our PA system. We're going to give our descent speech. Alright, and looking out the window, I noticed still have that speed brake spoiler and flight detent. Flight detent is the maximum that can be extended in flight. Once we touch the ground, it can go to full up, at which point uh, we're trying to completely spoil the lift so the plane doesn't float back off the runway or bounce. have retracted that and you can see we are in arm. You'll remember that from the checklist we looked at. Uh, I was talking about VREF and we didn't do it so let's get down here. Looking at your various uh, page keys you're going to go to this one init and ref. Click it and there you go. We have an approach reference on the right hand side you have flap slash speed and it's blanked out. We need to select our approach speed and flap setting. And so based on this gross weight of 141.1 uh, it has calculated for us. It's nice we don't have to get out a chart. At flaps 15 our VREF, our touchdown speed is 155 knots. And that's, uh, that's fairly hot. We can take off at that speed. Our flaps 30 is 147, and that's a little bit more normal. And flaps 40, which is 
pretty much our full flap setting on the 737. Flaps 40 uh, is 140 knots, which is a little more comfortable. We have uh, just about 7,500 feet to work with. I've got brakes set to two, so let's do flaps 40. So I have clicked here. You see the font got a little bit bigger. I'll click beside the blank. For whatever reason, it doesn't automatically populate the first time you click it. Now I'm going to come back up here again and click beside the 140 knots and you can see it jumped down there. It's the only feature I found where Princess Juliana it does that. Oh, our ATIS has arrived. 1400 Zulu weather. Wind 330 and 5. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 26. Dew point minus 11. Altimeter 2991. Arriving runway 10. Departing runway 10. Advise on initial contact, you have Victor. Alright, I'm going to make that stop talking, so we're going to toggle to the tower frequency. Um, we're arriving runway 10. The uh, more important thing, let me double check, 2991. Yeah, altimeter is 2991. So, our very expired ATIS from, uh, from here is, is not really very helpful. You can see the drag required has popped up, so this is going to happen a lot as we're talking our way through this arrival. Now we're going to get busy, so put that speed brake back out. Let's correct our pressure setting to 2991. Make them agree, 2991. They agree. Land in sight. Right, change our map zoom to 40. And you can see we're actually just about on our star chart. Let's go over here. Go to home. Go to Habitat. Airport. This is our arrival chart. And here's one of the reasons why you want to have Navigraph. When you get closer, I have programmed in this lovely little icon for you. It's just a nice reference to reassure yourself that you are where you think you are, since the ship's map does have the waypoints, but you know you don't have the overlay of obstacles or the other inbound paths. So it's uh, nice to be able to check that. Right, let's check our altitude. We're certainly above 2,600. And let's go look at our legs. We have finished, let's make sure we did this. We have finished setting a V ref. So we're going to be flaps 40 at 140 knots. I usually write this down. I like to. I like to see it in front of me if I get forgetful. Laura, Luba, PJM, Avaki. Lessor. Uh, I can't quite recall if I had mentioned this to you earlier, but the RNAV for this chart, when you dial it up here, doesn't actually show the airport. Sometimes the, the runway is actually reflected here in the legs page. This time it's not. Lessor, Mapon, and then right to, this is our miss, mi, missed, I can't say that word today, missed approach fix of on bed and the right hand hold. So basically, once we get to map on, if we're landing, we're going to be disconnecting from the uh, FMC, the autopilot will not be handling flying the ship anymore at that point. It is going to be entirely up to us. Uh, visual manual approach at that point.
Alright, I don't anticipate us having anything exciting to do for about the next 30 or 40 miles until we get up here to Avaki, which is just about the, uh, it's the uh, end of the star and the beginning of our approach. So, we passed Gouda, we're headed for Elora, Iluba. Scroll up to be able to get that. So, there we go. We're headed for Avaki. So, I think I'm going to shut down uh, the video for a moment here, and we will pick back up at Avaki. All right, and we're back. We're getting closer to Avaki. Uh, I'm going to run down our altitude setting. You can see our last altitude that the ship was going to be handling is 699, which is not a number you can select anyway. So I'm going to set it to 600. We'll be going manual at that point anyway. You can see uh, I think I changed the resolution while we were off there for a moment, and we are coming up on a decel. At that point, we need to slow things down. We start sticking out the flaps. And we're less than 20 miles now from the runway. You might notice our VREF has actually been populated here in the corner. The bottom of the airspeed tape. That's a nice reference. All right, we're below 10,000 feet, so let's get those lights on. Pressure setting is good. Seatbelt signs are on. Did our brief. I'm probably going to skip the briefing the crew. At a glance, we look incredibly high. Um, um, yeah, bonkers high to me. I'm willing to bet I have an issue right now and yep <laughs> all right we'll just eyeballing this uh, in 10 miles to drop 7200 feet I don't think it's gonna happen so we're gonna have a very good chance to go experience that mixed Missed approach fix. Third try today. Still can't say it correctly. Uh, let's roll our resolution down to 10 miles. Yeah, there's just no way, guys. There's no way. There's the runway. It is just not going to happen. So I'm going to leave the uh, mood control panel. Oh, I think I know what happened. Well, I'm going to give you my speculation as it goes. Since our current routing, oh, switch over, past our transition altitude, it's 18,000 feet in the United States. It varies elsewhere. It's uh, it's going to be on these charts. Here's what I think happened. Uh, I think we've been outsmarted by the FMC. Um, okay, look at Princess Juliana as we fly over it. The FMC was anticipating a descent to the last waypoint, is, is my guess. And the last waypoint is this hold at on bed. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. And so it, it inaccurately calculated oh yep you see we've got this uh this added fix pjm Psh. 
What a mess. What a mess. What a mess. Alright, well, learning has occurred. I'm sorry I haven't given you a perfect straight shot, but as, uh, as with anything in life, when it goes perfectly to plan, you don't learn as much as when you make a mistake at times. So you can see now that we are rolling out to map on. Here's where a little better preparation on my part between checking the charts, looking at what the FMC put in the legs page, and making sure that they are in agreement and sensible would have been good. Uh, that might have prevented us having this relatively unnecessary trip out to the hold. You can see we're not even headed to the hold. We're being sent back to Avaki. This has created that bizarro situation I mentioned to you when we put in our transition to Gouda. So I'll tell you what, for the moment, I'm just going to let it do what it wants to do. I'm uh, considering a second possibility here. Sometimes you could have an approach where you are actually set to come out, fly over the airport, basically procedures to hook back around and come in and so I'm just going to see kind of what the ship does here it may actually get us there without me having to do any further reprogramming um, if you noticed a mistake like that you could always go up here to the mode control panel, wrestle down the altitude, use vertical speed, and flight level change, whatever you wanted to manually bring it down and put in the course. But uh, since today we were looking at how to program the FMC, I don't want to mess with that. bring this back out to Avaki. If it swings us around, you can see we're reaching a much more uh, doable altitude. We're only about 4,300 feet off the deck, and with the distance to the runway from Avaki, that's actually probably just about right. Very interesting. I'll toss in here in the video uh, a little screenshot of the flight radar 24 of the actual WestJet flight coming out of Canada and its holds take a peek and see if what just happened to us is something they actually had but uh, you know, that, that procedure isn't reflected here to send you back out to Avaki um, I saw that in an airport in Europe I can't remember exactly where it was where uh, we had come in between the mountains in a valley and basically to clear all the terrain to get to this airport there was just no way to be at a good landing altitude so you came in sort of like we did now eight ten thousand feet above the runway you overflew the runway and you started these procedure turns to give yourself time and space to descend to the runway we're over the ocean that doesn't make any sense here, but it seems to be a fairly similar circumstance. I'm going to change my bank angle out to max uh, behind your heading bug. You can set the bank angle maximum from 30 degrees max down to 10. I think it was in the center a moment ago. But uh, 
as we're getting to lower speeds. I want to give this thing a chance to actually make these turns. So let's uh, let's start extending flaps now. We're below 250 knots. Uh, flaps 1, 2, and 5 are all going to work below 250. If you look on the speed tape, that red dotted line came in right away as soon as I hit it. And that's showing you your flap restriction. If you get up into the red, you're going to lose the flap. Uh, probably on one side and not the other, and the plane's going to start to roll over and you've, you've got some big problems. You can see our speed is dropping. Actually, as soon as you extend the flaps, the uh, it overrides the speed from the FMC to preset flap speed. So this 169 is where it's set to. You still see the altitude is set for 600. See, we've kind of passed Ivaki, and I'm not sure it's going to swing back. I'm tempted to just force it to go to direct to Lessor and then map on, but. Oh, it is going to skip Ivaki. It's already doing it. We don't need to do that. It's just still reflected up there. If it was still saying Ivaki and we wanted to go to Lessor and skip it, we could click beside Lessor, move it up, execute, and we'll be ready. All right, let's take a peek here. 2,700 feet and descending. You can see uh, we're at uh, a zoom of 10 miles, and so we're just about 10 miles out. Uh, so we're going to come in, turn left at Lesser. Map bone, we're going to decide if we're at an acceptable altitude and everything's ready to go. This time it should be. We're moving pretty slow at about 170 knots right now, and we're at flaps 5. We have not extended the gear, but we will at flaps 15, which I expect I'm going to do at Lessor. Uh, shame on me. The other half of Flight Bros is going to laugh. I have left speed brake out for quite some time. So let's retract that now. The speed brake arm denunciator is on. Our radar altimeter call out for 2500 just chimed. When we actually touch down at TNCM, we are flying into a scenery pack that was free off the X-Plane Forum site. It includes Maho Beach, the little bar, some sailboats. Um, there's no people on the beach. That, that would have been a nice touch, but that might be a, a bridge too far for the uh, scenery pack in uh, X-Plane. But it is a very nice scenery pack, and... Uh, I'm always appreciative of any free airports that are out there. Usually labor of love of somebody who just had the skill, knowledge, and really wanted to share. So many thanks to many thanks to you. And we'll include that link in this video so that you can grab that scenery pack if you enjoyed it. We also have on our channel a little uh, slideshow style movie of uh, 757 trip I did from Miami here to Princess Juliana. There's a few clips of the scenery pack also in our uh, channel trailer. There we go. This is looking substantially better. Substantially. Alright. We're coming up on our final decision point of map on see that wind is 330 at 5. That was not what we had on our meat tire a while ago. Uh, it's coming from the side and the rear. So a little bit of cross tailwind component. And I think at this point I'm about ready to go manual. AP disconnect. Going to leave the auto throttle in control for now. Uh, I'm going to move to the left of the runway. Crosswind is going to be pushing us to the right. Laps 10. Approaching. One, zero. Gear down. Laps 15. Okay, I've overcorrected. Gear 
Gear is coming down. One green, three green. Gear down. Going flaps, 25. Canceling auto throttle. Flaps 30. V ref is 140, it flaps 40, and we're moving pretty quick right now. I put the speed brake in flight to tent. Going for flaps 40. Tracking speed brake. Now, we try not to clip the fence. We're approaching 40. I'm going to spool up a little bit because we do not want to plunk into that fence. Okay, throttles to idle. Speed brake deployed. Thrust reversers. Not doing a very good job keeping center line. 80 knots. 80 knots, canceling thrust reverse. Welcome to Princess Juliana. Flap retract, speed brake retract.